Today, our affections meet us in the book of Mark, chapter 1 through 3. I remember a time that my parents took my brother and I down south. I believe it was a family reunion. Needless to say, I knew that the greater group of family was coming together. So there was excitement and there was a lot of thought of who we were going to engage with as we made this trip down south. Needless to say, the excitement wasn't about our family going down south but it was about someone that the family hadn't seen in years. So they were overjoyed with the thought of being able to engage this person, speak with them, hear the stories of what he was gonna share about his time in war and growing up in Detroit and boxing overseas. This person that I speak of is my grandfather. My grandfather hadn't been down south in years. So everyone was super excited to be able to engage him and to hear what had been going on with him. As we enter into the book of Mark, there is a similar excitement that's going on. That excitement resides on God's promises being fulfilled of a Savior to come. That Savior being Jesus the Christ. John the Baptist meets us in the wilderness. Can you see him? He's standing on a tree bark. He is proclaiming that we need to repent from our sins as he prepares baptism to those that were near. John the Baptist spoke of the Savior that was coming, and he had a great desire for those that were up under his voice to be prepared for what was to come. John the Baptist spoke that this individual, he couldn't bow down and undo the sandals of this person because of the power that he had in his hand. The one thing that I think that is quite interesting about this reading is that John the Baptist wasn't the only one that was in the wilderness. Before Jesus the Christ started his preaching ministry, the Spirit ushered him into the wilderness. For 40 days, he was amongst the beast, and he was being upheld by the angels. Now, Salem, I know as we press through this 40-day fast, some of us may feel like we are in the wilderness, as if we were lonely and we don't have the support that is necessary to press through. I want to encourage you on today. Your ability to press through during this cleanse, during this fast, is going to enable you to have a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior. The people of that time had a great desire to be near Jesus. They pressed forward like they didn't have anything to lose. They marched, they ran towards the one that they had heard about. The Savior was before them. And they were going to do anything possible to get near the person that could save them from their situation. Jesus was in the miracle business. Can you see yourself amongst the crowd trying to press to get towards the Savior, the healer, the Redeemer? Yes. That's where we're at right now, Salem. We don't have any other options. We tried to do everything on our own. We tried to lean towards money. We tried to lean towards community. We tried to lean towards those things that we thought that were going to allow us to have breakthrough. But we've come to the point, our wilderness moment, where we realize that we have to get in front of the Savior, press towards the Savior today. Let me pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be able to have this time with you. Lord, as we press through this 40-day cleanse, I pray that there is a greater intimacy that comes forth. I pray that we do not settle by losing a couple pounds or having a couple blessings come our way that we weren't expecting. I pray that we come to you with a sense of urgency 
with a sense of understanding, with a sense of greater faith, knowing that we need to be in your presence. Lord, have your way with us. We pray that you will show up and show out like never before. And ultimately, we just want your will to be done. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.